Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a champion guide on Miscreated Monster. So as you can see here, uh, Miscreated Monster is an epic champion who's obviously modeled off of Frankenstein, and he's one of the best epics in the game, undoubtedly. So before I go into his gearing, let's just look at his kit here. First is A1, Meaty Fists, attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 15% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. Has a 50% chance of placing a 60% decrease defense debuff for one turn if the stun debuff is placed. So this books up to a 25% chance to stun on each hit. And that's really strong on an A1. Stun is one of the best debuffs in the game. It locks an opponent down, it stops their cooldowns. So just an overall strong A1. And on top of that, a 60% chance when booked of placing a 60% decreased defense if the stun is placed. So that doesn't come off that often since it's only a 25% chance on the stun on each hit. But still, that is helpful to get a decreased defense uh, on occasion. So going on to the A2, which is really his bet, bread and butter, which is Lightning Storm. Attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. Places a shield buff on all allies for three turns equal to 25% of the damage inflicted. So this is an amazing ability. First of all, a 50% chance to stun is amazing, okay, on an AoE because that's hitting everyone in the wave. It's stunning at least, well, not at least half of them, but around half of them, depending. And uh, it's just an amazing ability, especially in the spider dungeon, because with that three turn shield equal to 25% of the damage inflicted in spiders, that's huge. We're talking hundreds of thousands of HP. It is absolute insanity, as you will see coming up. The third ability here, It's Alive, places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for 3 turns. Heals this champion by 50% of their max HP, places a 15% continuous heal buff on this champion for 3 turns, and that is on a 4 turn cooldown when booked. So again, another amazing ability, ally protection is really good for keeping all of your allies alive while you're going through waves as well as in Spider when you've got those huge shields. When ally protection comes up, you're splitting the damage between the person taking the hits from the Spiderlings, as well as miscreated monsters, so those shields seem even bigger. Then we've got his passive, Spooky Groan. Oh, actually, I should also mention, uh, with him healing 50% of his max HP, he doesn't need to be in lifesteal or anything like that. He sustains himself really well. And so that makes him viable for stuff like Nightmare Campaign. His passive, Spooky Groan, places a fear debuff on the attacker for one turn whenever an ally is attacked while under an ally protection buff. So again, a very strong ability. Uh, in Spider, for instance, if they're all attacking your one person and he has an ally protection on, well, the next turn, half of the Spiderlings aren't going to get a go because they're under the fear debuff. Finally, his aura increases ally HP in the arena by 33%. So not that strong. Um, ally HP isn't a super strong uh, aura and it's only in the arena. But, you know, it's okay. He didn't need to have an aura. He's already a very strong champion. So that being said, let's go ahead and get into his artifacts here. So I've got him in one set speed or two set speed, sorry, one set immortal. So the immortal just helps sustain him a little bit more and the speed, obviously, I'm trying to get him as quick as possible. So I have him in crit rate gloves, HP percent chest plate, and speed boots. Now, this is a very strong build for him. Uh, as you can see, he's rocking about 60k HP, which is pretty good. Optimally, he'd be around 80%, but with the gear I have, this is where, or 80,000, but with the gear I have, this is kind of where I got him at. 100% crit rate, uh, 210 speed, 137% crit damage, and 257 accuracy. 
Now down the line, uh, you could potentially, if you have the sub stats, you could switch the gloves to either HP percent to get it closer to 80k HP or crit damage in order to just pump out tons of damage on the A2. So I have them obviously in a crit damage amulet, an accuracy banner, and on the ring we just got some HP with good defense rolls. So now onto his masteries. I have him in the offense tree and support tree, and I have him in the basic uh, clan boss build here, but uh, I don't really take him into clan boss. This is more for spider. So we're coming crit rate, crit damage down to war master. And then in the support tree, we're going accuracy, more accuracy, more accuracy, evil eye to drop turn meter. And then we've got a chance to gain turn meter when a buffy cast drops off as well as a 5% chance to get an ability back, like his A2, for instance. And finally, Lasting Gifts is going to go ahead and extend those ally protects and shields for another turn, which is actually sometimes crazy because it's already three turns to begin with, which is strong. And if you can get it to four, it's just amazing. So let's go ahead and go into the dungeons here and we'll see where he's good, which is pretty much everywhere so uh he's great in ice golem spider dragon not as great in fire knight just because of the affinity but i'll go ahead and show you him in each of these so in ice golem 20 here go ahead and get in take frozen banshee out and put rotos back in so he's a mainstay in my ice golem 20 team as we'll see here He's gonna come in and we're going to go ahead and turn meter boost, speed boost. And then he comes through with his A2 here. Which as you can see, only hit for about 11,000, but we don't have any defense down yet. And on top of that, uh, he's an HP champion, you know, he's not meant to hit super hard, but you'll see once uh, we get going again, he's going to be hitting a lot harder. So we'll go ahead and put it on auto and get through these waves. So the main idea with this team comp is, uh, first of all, we've got two speed boosters and that's just going to help my people rotate their abilities as quickly as possible. Miscreated Monster is in here as kind of a support role. So basically what he's in here to do is keep my people alive, uh, stun the waves so that they're not attacking and allow uh, Rotos to kind of come in here and wipe everyone out. So it works pretty well for Ice Golem. Obviously another strategy is to come in here with a Poisoner instead. Uh, that takes a little bit longer than bringing Rotos in because he's capable of taking down the adds for good with that skill right there that blocks revive. And honestly, he's just kind of nutty. As you can see, he's just going off killing the entire wave. <laughs> All right, so we're on to the boss in a minute 35, and that would have been closer to a minute if I hadn't slowed down at the beginning there. So I wish he had saved that so he could take down that ad permanently on the next turn. Let's see. He should hopefully have it up to take down this guy when the time comes. Alright, so as you can see, Miscreated Monster, he's just keeping us good. We've got shields, we've got uh, ally protection, which is about to wear off, but he'll get it back up really soon. And there's one of the adds down. Alright, so we're coming towards the end of the fight here. I think he should have one more overhead swing. That should be coming through right now. Perfect. And as you saw, both of them have a block revive, so this is over. Alrighty, so that's going to be Ice Golem. As you can see, he performs very well there. 687,000 damage, the second most out of anyone. Although, granted, these three definitely aren't meant for damage. Uh, but he does a lot for the team. He's really indispensable. So let's go ahead and back out. Now let's look at dragon 
So again, he's part of my Dragon 20 team, and he is in there to do the same thing. He's just stunning waves. He is uh, protecting my team, making sure they're not going down. And as you can see, my team here is basically exactly the same as my Ice Golem team. I have Tayrell in here to do it a little bit faster than Madam Saris because he provides some extra damage. But Madam Saris could come in here just fine and perform the same duty. Alrighty, so as you can see, he's coming in. He's hitting for about 20-something thousand, which is pretty good. And... Uh, I could definitely min-max his build to be doing more damage, but as it stands, there we go, stun on the A1. He's providing so much utility without being built for super heavy damage that I'm not even worried about going through and getting him in crit damage gloves or anything like that. Because, I mean, there we go, two more stuns off right there. So they're not going to be getting any sort of turn meter boost now. And it's stuff like that that really helps, especially with a lower level team, because if you're not outspeeding the enemy waves by that much, then you definitely need them CC'd so they're not coming back and hitting you super hard. Alright, so it looks like we'll be getting through these waves at about a minute 45. There we go, so I think Rotos will be finishing him off right here, and we're on to the dragon, so a minute 40. So once you get to the dragon, uh, his roll is kind of done. I mean, he does help take a little bit of damage off if the inhale happens to go off with his ally protection and shields. But overall, at this point, you know, your main damage dealer is going to take out the dragon by himself, essentially. So typically you'd have a Poisoner in here. Uh, I like bringing in Rotos because he can usually provide enough damage for me to take down that bar quicker. And uh, he's just a nutty champion in general, so you'll probably be seeing him uh, in plenty of my content going forward because he is strong almost everywhere. Alrighty, so as you can see, we're kind of just bursting him down. Looks like we're going to be finishing this up right around the 2 minute 50, maybe 3 minute mark. And so obviously this isn't a speed run team. Um, there's no royal guards or cold hearts or anything like that. This is just a very consistent team to come through and take the dragon down. He's going to get one more inhale here it looks like, but that's it. Alrighty, so that is Dragon. Uh, let's get a speed roll, but that's kind of crappy, so get rid of it. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and get into Fire Knight. And Fire Knight, obviously, like I said, he's affinity countered on stage 20, so I'm going to go ahead and back up to stage 18 and show you my team here. So uh, I'm typically running a uh, Apothecary, two Armagers, uh, Stagnite, and Rosin Scarhide. What I'm going to go ahead and do is take out Rosin and put in Miscreated Monster here. And he'd be great for 19 as well. Uh, the reason I'm going back to 18 is because most of my team is Spirit. So I want to be able to show him in the best application. So go ahead and get into it here. Boom, we got four stuns right off the bat. He is pulling in his work. We've got shields, we've got ally protection, he's got healing. He just provides so much in his kit, it's really crazy. Like, uh, when they released these Halloween champions, I think they got it backwards as far as which ones were the epics and which ones were the legendaries, because I don't think Harvest Jack or Brackus the Shifter really hold any sort of comparison to Miscreated Monster and Madam Saris. But hey, that's fine with me, because uh, epic books are a lot easier to come by than legendary. So we're making pretty quick work of these waves. Looks like we're going to be through at about a minute 15, maybe a little bit sooner. But 
as you can see that was about 16 and a half K right there on his a1 which is pretty solid for an HP champion and boom three more stuns coming off on the a2 so I mean as long as they're stunned they're not coming through and hitting our guys they're not getting their cooldowns it is very essential to any team in a in a level 20 dungeon especially that they're not coming through and hitting your guys because they hit very hard at this point so the nice thing about him in Fire Knight is he does have a two-hit A1, which means that he can come through and uh, help drop the shield. So at this point, uh, we're pretty much done. My team's never going to let him take a turn again with the reduced speed, the reduced turn meter from Armager. And now he's just in to provide us a little bit extra damage. Alrighty, so we went ahead and took him down there. It was about a 2 minute 25 second run, which is great. So, uh, like I said, you don't really want to be bringing him into Fire Knight 20 if you can avoid it. He does okay there, but with his affinity counter, it's definitely not the best thing. He'll be targeted by the adds, the waves. It's just not a, not a good scene for him. But finally, we're going to go ahead and uh, get into Spider. So this is what he's really known for. Go ahead and bring him into Spider 20 here. So as you can see, uh, the team is actually the exact same as my Fire Knight team because they have very similar mechanics. Uh, well, actually, sorry, it's not exactly the same because my Fire Knight 20 wouldn't have him in it. But for Fire Knight 18, that is exactly what I would run. So we're going to go ahead and get into it here, and you will see Apothecary is going to go first. He's going to speed up, and then Miscreated Monster is going to come through. He's going to use his A2 here, and boom, we're hitting for about 30k on all of them. Look at these shields. It's insanity. So now Stagnite is going to do his thing, decrease defense, and as he comes back around... Uh, miscreated monster is going to do way more damage with that decreased defense which means way bigger shields so an aoe decreased defense along with him in this fight is uh, really great to help keep your people alive because uh in his view the best defense is a great offense so at this point, it's very much like the Fire Knight dungeon in that the spider is never going to take another turn. So this is basically a death by a million cuts strategy. Uh, we're just going to keep getting War Master procs and knocking down his turn meter as my Armager tanks the damage and the poisons thanks to this shield. Because if it weren't for Miscreated Monster, uh, this Armager would definitely not be able to take all of this abuse. Alright, so we're coming back around to him again pretty quick here. I think he should have his A2 up. Yes, he does. Alright, so we've got some of the decreased defense up still. So let's see how much he's hitting for now on those guys. Boom, so 34,000 there. Uh, so if it's up on everyone, especially, uh, the shields are just nutty. But I mean, look at that. It's already taking up like three quarters of their health bar. So this guy is, as his name implies, a monster. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end of this fight and just kind of show you guys the end result. Alrighty, so as you can see, the spider is dead. And uh, we took him out in about 4 minutes 16. This team can actually do it a lot faster, as you can see, best time 149, uh, but it's all dependent on how often War Master procs, so that's just how it is. Yes, yeah, so that's Miscreated Monster, guys. Um, those are all of the dungeons that people have trouble with. Obviously, he's going to be just great in uh, any of the potion keeps, as well as the Minotaur, and he can do a lot of work in those four dungeons. I don't have him built for it, but he can even come into clan boss teams at earlier levels in order to provide the ally protection. So, I mean, overall, he's just an amazing champion. I would definitely suggest investing in him, getting him doing some big damage, and he will carry you. So, thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you're interested in seeing some future content, and thanks.